is heading the AIBC. He is uh, he is uh, heading the AIBC chapter in in Philippines, and he's the one who is giving us this backup support of the event. And uh, then we have uh, Ms. Shanti from Indonesia, who is also heading the AIBC in Indonesia. Um, so I will uh, leave it to both of you. To uh, Tiwari is also there. Tiwari ji, good morning. Can you mute your unmute yourself? Yeah. Ah, uh, morning. So, yeah, good, good morning, morning. Good morning. Yeah, I was just about to call you. That okay. So Tiwari ji, good morning to you. You, I think you heard the little introduction that I was trying to give for our panelists and uh, organizers. So Dato Ramesh is the key person here who is based in Malaysia, co-chair of AIBC. Um, then we have uh, Ms. Shanti from Indonesia who is heading the AIBC uh, uh, chapter in Indonesia. We have uh, Mr. Johnny in Philippines who is heading the AIBC uh, in, in Philippines. And um, Mr. Tiwari, uh, you would have, all of you would have seen, he's an excellent dynamic speaker. I had met him in Delhi a couple of years back and I was wondering how to bring him on our show because he keeps sharing all the wonderful job that he is doing in India. And he is the key person uh, for this sector because he is heading the, the SME sector in India, the, in the Indo-European chapter. And um, we look forward to hear from all of them. So I think uh, we are on the time for the show going long. So I'll leave it, I'll give it on, pass it on to Mr. Dato Ramesh Kodamal to take it over. Uh, are we starting the session now or? We are waiting for only five minutes we can. Beg your pardon? We'll give five to, five to six minutes. Five to six I minutes. I think we five minutes. We, we can just yeah. uh, look at it that uh, if there are any questions from the speakers, then we will try to fill that in and move forward. To get to the speakers, thank you very much for being here with us this morning. I think it's a great thing that we are doing today. Uh, a SME forum organized by the ASEAN India Business Council. And basically, as we all know that this is a very important structure within the economics of every country, SMEs. So I'm very sure that your input is going to be very valuable to the listeners down there. And we will also record down pointers to see that how we can highlight this in our website so that the SME businesses can have an opportunity to go through it and see what help we can actually render to them. I think thank you very much, Mr. Tiwari, Dara, Shanti, uh, Sandeep. Johnny, all of you uh, are playing a very important role. I think the greatest role today to play is to help the SMEs, to get them out of their problems and let's move forward, you know? So this is what I want to say to the speakers. I'm not a motivational speaker to motivate you all on the talk, but I personally feel that you all are fantastic and we are able to do it, let's do it. And we would like to take this across because AIBC wants to actually have about might be two events monthly till the end of this year to link in with the business community within ASEAN and India. I think uh, the Indian government too is very proactive to what AIBC is doing and uh, they also want us to pass this message across to businesses. So I think Mr. Tiwari, I think thank you for joining. And Dara, I think I have met you before in uh, Cambodia, I think you might not recall me because my hair is grayed a bit. Last time I had black hair, now it's white. So not to worry, we are friends. And Shanti, as usual, she's always young. And she's the chair for ABC uh, Indonesia. And she has got her own, what you call that, uh, advocacy, which she runs on the ASEAN basis to help investors coming into the country. And I think all of you, let's have links together. And if we can share our thoughts, let's share our thoughts and get a group where we can keep on working together. And for Johnny, he has been a very, very, very old friend of mine from uh, Philippines for the last 10 years since when we formed the uh, AIBC chapter. I think Johnny has taken a very keen interest. Johnny not only is in AIBC, but he's also in the Philippine Chamber of Commerce managing the India desk, which is a very important desk.
for the Philippine Chamber to link with uh, Indian businessmen coming to Philippines. So I think we have got all very important people and uh, I don't have to introduce Sandeep. I think uh, Dara and uh, Tiwari know Sandeep by now and he has been very actually active in activities uh, around ASEAN. Uh, I believe that earlier he was in different parts of ASEAN and now he's based in Cambodia. So I think we got a good group. We'll work together and see how we can take this agenda forward. It's very meaningful now at this time, particularly. I will start off and give my message once we have the participants in and we'll work towards that. Thank you. And, uh, We're already allowing the participants. Okay, please yes, allow uh, them in. Yeah, I think Sonia is trying to get in from India. She just messaged me. Are you able to see her, Johnny? Sonia, no. Yeah, yeah I, I, I saw on the screen. I, yeah, put that, yeah. And then Manish Grover has sent the email. He's also trying to log in. You see my message to you. But uh, if the new link, anybody can log in. I don't know. The, the, he's saying that uh, got through. Okay, Manish has got through. Grover is there? I think they're on the old link, that's why. But now anybody on the new link can come in. Ah, Manish Grover is already in. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so let me see. There are a few more who are still trying to get in. Actually, today is a good thing that we have both the all the speakers, main, both the speakers for, are from the SME sector, Mr. Tiwari and Oknea Sokdara. So they are all, both heading uh, the SME sectors in their respective countries. So I'm sure this would be very interesting uh, webinar with a lot of informations for the viewers. Um, yeah, okay, Indranil is also there. So, so once we touch the target of 20, can we start off? I think we've already got 17 uh, registered there now. Uh, actually, so I think there are many really more trying. I don't know. They're not able to get through. There are almost seven, eight who are saying that their registration is failing. I don't know why login failed, login failed. Anyway, I think uh, okay. I'll keep can trying. Start off I think we should start off and uh, I'll keep yeah, trying at my end. Okay, that's good. So we'll start off, okay, uh, Sandeep? Yeah, please, please. Yes, yes uh, okay. good morning. What? Datu, what? you have this Once again, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, ASEAN India Business Council, which was formed in 2005, is on the road to see that what we can actually work on to help the businessmen within ASEAN and India. As we all know that 97% of the businesses are from the SME sectors. Every government within ASEAN and India has got a very important role to play to support this sector. And especially during this particular time where we are facing the COVID problem, we feel that the most affected group within the whole system are the SMEs. And we are finding ways and means to encourage the SME, to motivate the SMEs, to share our experience with SMEs so that they stay, stay strong in this present challenges and come out of it. If you meet around the ASEAN countries, you speak to any SME, they feel that they are very uncomfortable because of what is happening. Their businesses have shrunk. Some of them cannot open their businesses for the time being because of the restrictions in various countries in ASEAN. And, and those who can open up are still not having an opportunity to move forward. Those in the tourism sector, if you see places like Singapore, no doubt the COVID cases have reduced, but still travel is not opened up. So you don't have the SMEs who are in travel business when we talk of tourism, there's a large group of SMEs involved in tourism. You see the bus operators, the taxi operators, 
you see the small restaurant, you know, there are many of them along the chain. And all of them do face this problem. When you look at Thailand, Thailand is another place where tourism is very important. And you look at all the reports which we are getting, the businesses have really shrunk. And, and everyone is helpless. The same thing is happening in Malaysia, in Indonesia, if you look, the businesses in Bali, they can't even open up because the sectors are closed because of COVID. It has been happening in Philippines. So I think it is very important for us today, collectively to pass a message across that how we can help or advise the SME to take a step forward to come out of this particular problem which they are facing. And what the latest report which we have been reading is that the COVID structure or the pandemic, which you call it, is not going to halt here. You might have some surprises coming up again. So how do we play our role as leaders in the business community to see that these SMEs do not fail? Because, but if, because if once you fail in your structure or business, it's very difficult to rebuild it, especially for the SME. So that's what I'm thinking that ASEAN India Business Council would like to play a very important role in, in this structure to see how we can come up with solutions. Uh, I, I know my dear friend Shanti from Indonesia, she has done a lot of research on these areas. And my dear friend, according to Sandeep, Mr. Tiwari, you have got a lot of expertise in this area. And also, uh, Mr. Dara, I think all, all of us who are here today are very focused in this sector. And we actually know what is going to happen and how we can help this group of people. Because they are actually helpless, running, a little, uh, running around like headless chickens in the system. Everyone is in a panic. Everyone does not know what to do. Some cannot pay their installments, come cannot pay their wages, come don't have the OPEC, some don't have the CAPEC. So all these are the issues which they are facing today. So I am humbly requesting the speakers to pass a message across loud and clear for this SME that we have had challenges. From my experience in the last 50, 47 years in business, I faced a lot of crises, but I have managed to come across over them. But this is something which I personally feel that's very challenging. And we need more support for this sector to help them out. With that, I would like to thank you and I put you on to Sandeep. And I think we'll start off the session and the listeners who are there, I wish you all, all the best. You all, if you all are SMEs, please don't worry. We will find solution. We will find a way that we can come out of this crisis, but please stay safe, which is important. Because I myself am getting worried because I hear of so many cases happening to SMEs. And sincerely, I hope that we'll come out of it. Thank you. Sandeep, please carry on. Yeah, Dr. Ramesh, I just want to make a request. I am continuously getting these messages from the people who wanted to register and they are trying. Yeah. And uh, I am sending it in, in our group also. You can see, you and Johnny can see that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it, almost seven years Sandeep, of if I may correct you, uh, they are still following the old. We no, no, no. I passed the new one already. You see the one you just sent me. That's not the number. The number is 81100, but they are putting nine something. Okay, let me. Okay, fine enough. So then if I'll they can follow the new, there is no problem at all. Oh, now see the ambassador also writing the same, the Cambodian ambassador to India. Okay, I can can we do one thing, Dato? Can we get yeah. uh, 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 Mr. Tiwari to start off while I keep sending them and uh, and I can do the yeah. closing in that case? Yes, yes, yes. Is that I mean, okay? Sandeep, yeah, we, we, we'll tell Mr. Tiwari to start off. Yeah. And then by the time we get others to join in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'll just take 10 minutes. Tiwari, you all start just, off and just Sandeep request them to just forget the old and just look at the new. Yeah, please. Tiwari, you start. I will do after you if required. Not a problem. Okay. If you want, I can do it now also. I was just trying to get more speakers. <clears> here. 
messaging me still try to uh, what do you say dato what do you you want me to start off or i give uh, no no I, i i think there's no problem basically speaking uh, mr tiwari can start off and you can link with your okay. uh, what tiwari ji you please get them in okay. yeah okay yeah can you put my uh, uh, Yeah, presentation. Johnny, Johnny, both the presentations are there with with you. Um, Mr. Tiwari's presentation I had sent yesterday. Uh, Tiwari's presentation. I have Shanti and I have uh, the other one. I don't have Tiwari. Tiwari ji is yesterday I sent you. Yesterday in the email. No, no, no. Okay. In WhatsApp. Yes, there in WhatsApp. I don't have. I don't. Johnny, Shanti, uh, uh, there's no problem if we can get uh, Tiwari's presentation. Shanti yeah, is already there. Maybe someone can start off first. No, seven thirty, seven thirty yesterday. I can send it again to you. Just send it now. I'll have it right away. Yeah, it's there already. It's yesterday seven twenty six my time. I don't have that. Sir. Oh, okay, this one. Yeah, yesterday, it. yesterday okay, I sent you. Okay, okay, I have it. I have it. <laughs> okay, no, sorry, it, sorry, sorry. I think there's so many messages coming these days. There are so many links coming in these wow. days that every year, one day daily we have about five or ten links to participate in. So I think uh, it's quite a challenging situation. Okay. Thank you. Can you share that? Sure. Good morning. Good morning. In my uh, presentation, I uh, so everybody can have it. So, first of all. thank you very much and to we all faced a lot of problems during covid but unfortunate this was very unfortunate but fortunately we are getting into new dimension of thinking like now india has about 2.5 uh, 2.5 lakh gram panchayats we have to shift our focus from cities to villages and my presentation will be showing you where all we can get new sector for smes because our uh, honorable minister and prime minister has already taken lot of things into msmes now even small shops wholesalers they also are part of the sme so they can take benefit of all the government policies in india we have 29 subjects of panchayati raj panchayati raj is a self governance local self, self governance where we find all those sectors where we can join hands and we can be part of the part of building this great country india and also leading almost more than two third of the countries who are having similar or uh, lesser uh, resources than us investment is huge so that's the first slide congratulations to asian india business council we would love to partner with them join hands in this huge business opportunity of about 5 lakh crore because we can invest get, get investment of about 2 to 3 crores in every gram panchayat so 2.5 lakh into 2 crore is that figure can we go to the next slide please okay so this is the investment right now uh, we are talking about uttar pradesh so but this multiplied by 5 times because uttar pradesh is almost 1/5 or uh, of the country population wise Can we go to the next slide, please? 
Okay, so these are the countries participating uh, participating as for the information of Majumdar ji. Next slide, please. Okay, what are we looking for? We are looking for collaborations. We are looking for investments. We are looking for market. We are looking for technology. We are looking for educational partnerships. Because what we have done recently is we have uh, uh, our uh, Ministry of Education and one of the important organizations, Rashtriya Kanvino Ayo, established in 2019 by Honorable Prime Minister of India. We have uh, requested all the Indian universities to open up Kamdhenu chair in their universities. So here we can do, and Kamdhenu chair is uh, not just the cow, because Kamdhenu means a cow which can give everything, because we are talking of, when we talk of Vishwaguru Bharat, when we talk of India, we talk of spiritual dimension of sustainable development. See, we have to understand the uh, difference between religion and spiritualism. So here we are getting into the new dimension here we can have a lot of institutional networks, educational partnerships, and joint ventures. Because every university will have a Kamdhenu chair, which can coordinate with the universities across the globe and be partner in developing the rural world. Because what we have as a climate change, why, why we have this COVID situation today? Because we in India, we have seen that people living in villages have not been affected by it. And I have uh, spoken to many of the ambassadors of uh, Africa where they don't have drive, direct flights. They did not have COVID cases. So COVID cases came to places where we have uh, in the cities and where we have direct flights and interactions. So next slide, please. So this is how finance can be arranged and we have a huge opportunity in India. This presentation is available for all of you. I have already shared in the chat and I think I'm sure Mr. Sarjit uh, will share to others. Next slide, please. See, this is our focus because we have to create CEOs, self-employed CEOs, because till now, India or I'm sure rest of the world also, they have uh, treated their rural part as, I think, beggars, you know, because we have to give everything in two kgs of rice or BPL or what. We have never considered our villages, our gram panchayats as a unit, as an enterprise. So now it's high time where we have to start thinking our gram panchayats and villages as enterprises. So here we are working on creation of 2.5 lakh CEOs for rural India. And here we need partnerships because this is what will be the new India. Can we have the next slide, please? So this is what is the uh, vision we have marketing the unmarketed India, and then spiritual dimension of sustainable development. Raji, are you there? Since he dropped out. He's not on the...
do we do? Will we wait or? Huh, you dropped out. Oh, okay, okay. He he's he's coming back. He says he, he, there was some technical problem. Um, Sorry about that. Sorry, uh, there was a technical error. So, um, idea is to create self employed CEOs with this is for Uttar Pradesh. So, 60,000 self uh, employed CEOs, self employed. We are not talking of government jobs. The, this is where SME sector comes into picture. And it's a huge investment sector and it's a very secure sector because. We have seen that villages and villagers and farmers, they have survived in every condition, in every country. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, the, the, so we have 29 subjects of Panchayati Raj and rural development. Next slide, so we have the subjects. Yeah, this is uh, where we can work on, we can join hands, the companies, the countries, they can come agriculture, including agriculture expansion, land improvement, implementation of land reforms, land consolidation, and soil conservation, animal husbandry, dairying, poultry, fisheries industry, minor irrigation, water management, and watershed development, social forestry, farm forestry, small scale industries in which food processing industry is involved, minor forest produce, safe water drinking, Hadi village and cottage industries, rural housing, fuel and fodder, rural electrification, including distribution of electricity, road, culverts, bridges, ferries, waterways, and other means of communication. Because these are the subjects where our gram panchayats are empowered by constitution to work in these areas. And we have uh, elected representatives in three tier panchayati raj. Gram Panchayat, Block Panchayat, and Jila Panchayat. This is a. Then we have education sector, non conventional sources of energy, technical training and vocational education, <clears throat> and non formal education, public distribution system, maintenance of community assets, welfare of the weaker sections of the particular of, uh, civil class and civil tribes, social welfare, including welfare of the handicapped and mentally retarded, family welfare, women and child development, markets and fairness. Health and sanitation, including hospitals, primary health care centers, and dispensaries, cultural activities, libraries, poverty alleviation programs. Next slide, please. So these are the uh, areas where we can join hands, we can have partners. So we can have partners from across the globe, you know, Indians or non Indians. They can join hands with the villages because every gram panchayat has land, building, ponds. Uh, trees, human skills, ranging from 2,000 to 10,000. So that's a huge scope. Yeah. And then you can create your own market. You can your, uh, do your own thing. Next slide. So now I did some research on the countries, what the <coughs> joint hands, Brunei, you can see in uh, next slide. Uh, this is Bodia. I uh, did some research. So these are the sectors where we are looking into collaborations and joint ventures. Next slide. This is Indonesia. Next slide. Laos, small country, but uh, they have their own plus and minus. Next, uh, uh, next slide, please. Malaysia, we have a few important sectors there. Next slide. Myanmar, it's an opening up economy. So next slide, please. Philippines, Philippines, we have seen Filipinos traveling to all over the world, doing a lot of work. Next slide, please. Singapore, Singapore is 
developing the developed country but we can join hands in many ways but uh, our focus if we have finance market technology partnerships we can do wonders in india next slide please this is thailand some of the sectors where uh, we are looking for collaborations and joint ventures next slide please this is vietnam vietnam is a uh, opening up economy uh, we have a venture called e platform.it we have offered Slide, please. Next slide. Okay. So now we can join hands in the sectors I mentioned because our focus is now rural India because we have seen Europe falling. We we can see their economy falling except for a couple of countries. Greece has problem. Italy has problem. Spain has problem. In, in all over the world, if we focus on rural part and start considering villages as an enterprise, and take our higher education students and universities to this sector, and we as a SME partners, we can join hands and take the world to the new dimension of thinking and away from. global warming climate change because now we also have to address those issues we have seen lot of globalization lot of uh, destruction around the cities but and well but countries like india bangladesh vietnam myanmar nearby you know and then uh, asian countries uh, african countries south asian countries they have left their rural part in a different sector in in a different mode so we can join hands there and move ahead this is my small presentation now if we have any questions now or later we can talk about it yeah thank you thank you mr tiwari uh, look questions we will probably take up in the last once all the speakers are uh, are done with their presentation Th yeah thank you again for your uh, wonderful, you. wonderful presentation elaborate and wonderful presentation uh, yes dr uh, ramesh i think we go on to the next speaker yeah uh, i i think we have shanti with us and then we'll move on and then get questions from the floor Okay, thank you. Can I share my slide, please? Okay. Perfect. Are you looking at my slide now? Yeah, it's good. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you very much again. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Ramesh and uh, Johnny and and Sandeep, all the uh, dignitaries here. Uh, for attending this very important topic as as what dr ramesh had mentioned sme since the last 3 years uh, you know especially during covid times what we have seen is there is a massive massive increase of the numbers of smes we have done which i'm going to share with you today in collaboration with harvard uh, university and and also our consulting firm we have done a little bit of a of a, a survey in terms of the characteristics of SMEs in Southeast Asia. I think it's important to understand what are their characteristics, which areas are the are the most prominent and you know how do we move forward providing our support to the SMEs. I think Mr. Tiwari did mention uh, one very important point earlier saying that uh, you know the villages are are one of the most prominent areas now where we we can actually establish and develop our SMEs the trend that we see today and this is based on our 6 months of research is that large corporations in the next 10 years time will tend to fail because of oversizing and over investments that has been poured into it so it is no surprise what we see happening currently in singapore and other uh, large 
countries, uh, big organizations are downsizing and they are taking up smaller spaces. They're letting go people and they're restructuring their business model. Now, when these people are being restructured and the big organizations are downsizing, where do these people go? Where do the finance directors of big multinational Fortune 500 companies and other directors go? What they do is they open up their own business and they do that in a format of SMEs. That is part of that, aside from the SMEs that we see, we have been seeing growing. What this slide shows you is Indonesia is the most largest uh, place where SMEs are there. Every, every uh, seven people you talk out of 10 actually owns a business, either as, uh, you know, mostly uh, small businesses. They will either them, their wife, their family, they would own some kind of a small business. This is a very, this is actually a very telling, telling slide. And if there is any collaboration that can be done between India, uh, I think uh, in, in, in ASEAN, I think Indonesia is one country that is worth to look at. Now, the next slide here is that when we talk about SMEs, what are the second thing that we talk about? Second thing that we talk about is actually the ease of doing business. People are thinking that the ease of doing business is only for large corporations, uh, but the SME are facing uh, big challenges in terms of uh, doing business as well. They too require the support from the governments uh, as much as the support that is required uh, from uh, large owned enterprises. They too require an equal support from the government. So the ease of doing business here is a very uh, pivotal part of the SME's growth moving forward. And if you see here, of course, Singapore is, you know, stands really up in the top and Indonesia is of course uh, in the middle. But what we see, I'm glad to see that Myanmar is actually catching up pretty quickly in the region. If you compare this slide two years ago, Myanmar was way behind. So Myanmar is now around 46.8% and Philippines is 62.8%. I think this is, uh, next slide, uh, next year, when we look at this, I'm sure the numbers would differ quite significantly. Now, if you look at, again, this one, the SMEs in ASEAN, I think there are uh, three things which they would need to, to have support on. First is the funding uh, to support help the adoption of di digital technology. As you all know that, you know, especially in this COVID times, uh, you you can still do business from home as long as you have a good digital technology support, right? Currently, we are talking why because we have a digital technology support in our in our homes. So this is one the basic. If you see the backbone of the future growth of economy is actually technology. That's number one. Number two is the creation of digital infrastructure. Now you have the technology, but the government does not provide the infrastructure that would not also work. And I see in some of the, uh, uh, you know, CMLV countries, the infrastructure is still lagging behind, but there are indications that the countries and the governments are, are catching up. And the third is the creation of the regulatory environment, uh, you know, that supports the risk taking and innovation. Uh, from the SMEs, because SMEs are all about risk-taking and SMEs are all about innovation. So if you look at the uh, change in revenue expectations before COVID and change in revenue expectation during COVID, which is 2019 and 2020, what you see is there is a huge decline during COVID, which is by 40%, right? And, and, uh, and, the, the reds are more compared to the blues, and this is actually uh, not very good, but we can turn this around. We can turn this around given the three elements which I did share earlier. Uh, moving on, uh, we see that uh, some of the business concerns of the SMEs are number one, cash flow, right? And, and when, we, when I say cash flow, I, I was, you know, a few of our clients are actually bank uh, large banks in Southeast Asia, and they said they have already 
at least given out uh, three billion U.S. dollar to support SMEs in Asia. Now, does that mean we need to give money to the SMEs? Not really. We need to also tell the SMEs, teach them how to manage their own cash flow, how to operate their own business. Because sometimes what they do is like, when they buy at $10, they sell at $15, they will think that $5 is their profit. That's not true. They forget to cut the operational costs and whatnot. So financial literacy is, is a big part of, of really ensuring the cash flow here. A uh, decrease in sales potential. Again, business, this is a very challenging environment. The, it fluctuates uh, on and off. I will share this slide. I will not go through each of these elements. But what I wanted to actually focus on is uh, change in consumer needs and behavior, which we see happening in the last two years, very drastic change in the behavior, and also the operating manpower costs. Surprisingly, salaries have not gone down. And this is, this is something which I think inflation could go up if government does not really adjust the skills, uh, labor, and, and talent category. At this given point of time, if you want to support SMEs to grow, SMEs cannot pay the salary as it is indicated before COVID time. Before COVID time, you can be paying your driver you know, $800. But after COVID, things are difficult. And if SMEs wants to start their own business, they can't be paying the driver $800 to $900 per month. So I think salary adjustment needs to be also looked into as well as uh, the price of commodities in the market. Uh, again, this is the areas on investment. I will not go into every details of this, but if you can look at it, uh, almost all areas experience an increase. So technology is the one that benefited the most and then employee skills and development that was before COVID was 38%, after COVID is 51%, which I think again, uh, you know, it tells really a positive story for us. The only thing that has, that has actually gone down is the factory plant machinery equipment, from, which is not very significant, you know, two to 3%. And then, of course, the current assets, which is you know just one percent down. But we see this, if you take this in total, and this is for the rest of Southeast Asia, you can kind of like look at how each countries are performing in terms of of the top areas of of investments, right? <clears throat> um, the business strategies, again, uh, part of the the job of our consulting firm, and we are really busy nowadays, is because large organization, Fortune 500 companies are remodeling their businesses. They feel that the, the model that they operated the last 10, 20 years will not fit them any longer in the future. And they require a new business model for the future in order to survive the future. We just uh, remodeled one uh, Fortune 500 multinational companies and we helped them lay off around 120 of their staff and we remodeled their whole organization. So I think agility is something that we need to look into and this also needs to come from the SMEs itself. I'm not just talking about large enterprises. We need to continue to innovate. We need to continue to be agile uh, in order to survive <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> at least the next uh, 10 years, five to 10 years time. So again, I'll not get into this uh, one by one, but what I want to touch more is uh, digital marketing has really come one of the top. And uh, if you look at the uh, five preferred st strategies to gain competitive aid, uh, the edge is actually continuing to tap on digital economy opportunities. So digitalization and technology still speaks very loudly in, in this slide. I think that is my... Uh, my last slide, and um, you know, again, thank you for inviting me to speak here. If there are any comments or questions, we can discuss this towards the end of uh, of this session. Thank you. I think Ramesh, you are not. You are muted. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I think can we go on to the next speaker? so that we can later get questions from the floor.
Is that okay, Sandeep? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Ognya Sogdara from Cambodia. Um, over to you, please. Yeah, thank you. And I, yeah. uh, let me introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Sogdara, the uh, Vice President of uh, Fast, uh, Cambod uh, Federation of Association of Small and Medium Enterprise of Cambodia, FASMEC. It is my great. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for Mr. Sam, uh, Sandeep to invite me to be a speaker in this uh, forum. So right now, can you share me my uh, presentation, Sandeep? Okay, next slide, please. Okay. So the, con uh, the content of, of our presentation is about the roles of MSME in Cambodia. The second one is Cambodian government support MSME, Cambodian and this one, Cambodia, uh, Cambodian government to launch the uh, second loan assist assistance program for micro, small and medium sized business. Cambodian to set have the trade level caught by the end of 2021, the new investment law reform. Cambodia government nice uh, rounds of tax revised measure to support the important sector. The last one is the tax incentive. So next slide, please. So <clears throat> the role of uh, um, SME Cambodia, um, SME Cambodia plays uh, crucial roles in Cambodia economy with their contribution to both Cambodia economy and social development. Similar to other Asian member states, MSME in Cambodia play an important role to in job creation and income generation for low-income people and the more vulnerable portions of population. Furthermore, MSME in uh, fostering economic growth, social stability, and development of more dynamic private sectors in Cambodia. Uh, MSMEs account for more than uh, uh, 500,000 established business according to the National Institute of Statistics in Cambodia. So the Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology, and Innovation indicate that MSME play a significant role in contributing to Cambodian economy as they account for 70% of employment, 99.8% of company, and 58% uh, of GDP. So next slide, please. So the Cambodian government support uh, MSME by to uh, create a SME bank. The government is making the effort to support SME in Cambodia while the SME bank which launched in 2020 with a 150 million cap capital investment. So the 50 million in financing has also made available through the agriculture and rural development bank to support MS. Um, MSME in the agro industry sector. The capital of MSME amount to 100 million. It is lined on April 1st, 2020 and jointly funded by MSME Bank of Cambodia and participating commercial bank and microfinance institutions, MFI. There are currently 33 participating institutions and 24 commercial banks, six specialized banks, and three MI, MFI. The average loans for 120,514, and with the minimum set at 16,800, and the maximum at 300,000 US dollars. SME bank loan cover all micro, small, and in medium enterprise, expect those in agriculture. The fund is benefit around 800 MSME so far. So next please. So the, uh, the government, Cambodia government to launch the second loan assistance program for MSME business. The, gov uh, the government has pledged 500 uh, million in additional assistance to revitalize small and India uh, medium enterprise affected by novel con, uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic. The new plan 
uh, financial package for 500 would be divided into two, 200 million in credit guarantee scheme and 300 million in additional loan for small and medium enterprise. The 300 million package will be distributed through the state-owned agriculture and rural development bank of Cambodia and the small uh, and SME bank of Cambodia. Next, please. So the Cambodia government also said to have the trade label called by the end of 2020. Ministry of Justice had directed the forma uh, formation of two committees to begin the process of establish uh, separate court for commercial and labor dispute. In the past, commercial and labor dispute case have been resolved in civil court. To be more specialized, the establishment, uh, establishment of commercial and labor court are to increase sufficiency in solving conflict. It will also contribute to clearing the backlog of case. The court are competent, uh, competent neutral, independent, and impartial in part so to have a great deal in building confidence, attractive and feel warm to the investor and business people in Cambodia. Next, please. So the new investment law reform. Uh, the new investment law reform will be more attractive and observe more investor because Cambodia already signed a, a free trade agreement FTA with China while negotiating with South Korean. The law also uh, revise and improve administrative procedure related to the in <coughs> institutional mechanism and procedure for applying for registration of qualified investment projects, SEC. It has shortened the time to issue registration certificate from 31 days to 20 days. And the registration application can be complete by using the information technology nursery. In, a, in addition, the law has uh, strengthened the monitoring and control mechanism of relevant ministry and in institution through simultaneous and joint inspection, as well as determine incentive for the project both take and non take to attract investment flow to the sector that Cambodia need in the context of economic device suffocation and increased competitiveness. Uh, next. Cambodia government's uh, nice round of tech uh, uh, redemption measure to support the important sector during the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to the tech, the uh, realized uh, measure provided in March 2021, the Royal Government of Cambodia has provided further realized measures for certain industry which has continued to face the press, uh, uh, pressure from the ongoing outbreak uh, COVID-19. So the additional tech related incentive measures are the following. The uh, government industry, tourist sector, airline sector, transport and logistics sector, cash, uh, cash support program for poor and vulnerable families. So come to the last, the tech incentive. Hello, next slide please. So the tech incentive, uh, the tech incentive uh, for the foreign investor is to attract more to uh, foreign uh, investment to invest in Cambodia. So they has also said that the tech uh, on income exemption for three year period and five year period if the enterprise meet the condition follow use sixty percent of raw material from the local source or employ twenty percent more staff. Or located in SME cluster. So the repayment of TOL and minimum tax uh, exemption during this period allow deduction as follows 200% of expense on IT accounting system, 200 of expense on training for accounting or technical skill for employee, 
and 100% of investment on machine or technical equipment, uh, equipment which is innovative to serve and improve the pro uh, productivity. That come to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. For any question, just stop in the uh, message uh, in the chat. I can reply it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Oknia. Uh, Mr. Ramesh, Dr. Ramesh. Yeah, if there are any questions, please go ahead, Sandeep. And uh... Uh, yeah. uh, viewers, um, I mean, of course, um, uh, what all the three speakers have just concluded in their presentation. Um, so uh, we would like to invite the questions from the audience. You can put it on the chat box uh, and uh, you can refer to whom you are putting this question to. So the speaker would be happy to uh, answer you back. So who does the start? Let us see anybody uh, from the viewers from India, Asian countries. While the questions are uh, brought in uh, for the speakers, that the main motive for this session is uh, to see how the ASEAN SME sectors and India counterpart can help each other in cooperating. Uh, like example, like Malaysia is, is very strong in palm oil in confectionaries um, and uh, uh, in rubber and all that. So whether we can see a collaboration between the Malaysian SME sectors who can give in the tips and do a JV or a technology transfer with the other ASEAN countries and India. Similarly, like Cambodia is, is, is very strong in agricultural sectors. Uh, so whether they can collaborate together with the other ASEAN countries uh, and maybe do a joint investment in processing plants or other SME sectors. This is the main purpose. I mean, um, uh, Mr. Tiwari has given uh, a presentation on what India is doing in SME. Um, and similarly, the other two speakers from Indonesia and Cambodia has also given theirs. So this is a time, uh, and in Ms. Santi's presentation, you saw that the SME sectors in Myanmar has come up quite well. Um, so uh, this is something which we should collaborate. Uh, we as uh, Incherm and AIBC, we should also see whether a joint event can be done in ASEAN uh, within India and ASEAN, wherein uh, more, uh, I mean, more SME owners can come in and contribute. Any questions coming on the screen, please let me know. Anything in particular from the audience? Uh, however, I do apologize on behalf of organizers and myself that there has been some technical errors in logging in. We'll see that this doesn't happen uh, in our next events. Uh, I also would like to uh, tell here that this is our first partnership, although Dato Ramesh Kodamul and me, we have uh, been speakers on the other forums and uh, AIBC and Incherm has partnered now. This is our first event and we hope to do two events as Dato Ramesh told you all. So we'll be having two events every week on second Saturdays and fourth Saturdays. Uh, we will come up with new speakers. We will come up with new topics and uh, which will be of interest. Our next event would be on 31st of uh, this month in July. And the topic would be banking. We will soon be sending you all uh, the details and the e-invites and the flyers. Uh, so this is one thing which uh, I thought I will do a pre-announcement uh, so that you people know that this would be a series which will be going on for the next five, six months. Uh, and uh, I hand it over to Dr. Ramesh for his concluding remarks, if there is no other questions from the audience. Thank you, Sandeep. First and foremost, I would like to thank all the speakers who have been present here today. I think this was a great event for a start to see how we can work forward between ASEAN and India. I think the speakers highlighted a number of points and I think all those who are listening today to the speaker would catch on those points and I think can benefit from them. What I heard Mr. Tiwari said that there's a great opportunity in the villages in India. I think this is where someone should also tap 
to see how the SMEs can benefit from this sector. And uh, telling that in every village we can create a group of CEOs there. That's another good thing. We can go down to the ground level and look at things and see how we can work together. Because that is a good formula. Because we also need human resources to manage our businesses when we are investing overseas. So we have to really look at things positively. And when Shanti was speaking on two things which I picked up, she said the cash flow was SMEs. Cash flow has always been a problem for SMEs. Whether it is COVID or non-COVID, SMEs always have got a cash flow problem to manage their businesses. So I think SMEs must be very careful in doing so. And at this juncture, I think we should look into things very carefully to see how we can benefit from it. And Shanti also mentioned about digitization. I think digitization is the norm of the future. And every country in the world, within ASEAN and in India, is actually investing in digitization infrastructure, which is actually very important for all of us to look forward to, because this is going to be the new norm of the future. And I'm very sure that the younger generation, the younger population is already picking up very well. And it's already become a school subject or a university subject where they are already teaching you how to move forward in digitization. So this is great. I think we should always tell the SMEs to follow these norms and improve their business in whichever way they can by using the norm of digitization for them. Coming back to Cambodia, I think Cambodia had given us a good outlook on how they are managing the SMEs. I think uh, Onka Sok Dara has actually briefed us from his chamber's point of view, the government policies and the investments, which I think some of us SMEs who need to move over to cross borders can work together with Cambodia and see how we can benefit from this. So I think overall, we have done a wonderful job. The speakers have highlighted all issues. And I'm very sure that the listeners over here will keep on joining us in our future event. We feel the AIBC has to play a very important role. AIBC is actually a body which has been performed by the governments of ASEAN and India to see that how businesses can be linked to it. And if there are problems for any businesses in any sector, AIBC is able to bring it up to the AEM, the ASEAN Economic Ministers, to tell them the problem together with India. And I think this is a great opportunity for all of us to work together and to see in future how we can work and move forward. AIBC is not only linking with chambers in India or in ASEAN, we also have the joint chambers from the US, from Europe, from Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea. So we have got a big basket of linkages. So I think we should make use of this to see how we can take this agenda forward and help all the business groups along the line, whether they are SMEs, whether they are PLCs, whether they are GLCs, we are able to link with everyone to collaborate to see how AIBC can take this platform further, link and benefit all the businesses around. With that, I would once again like to thank all the speakers who are here today, Mr. Tiwani, Shanti from Indonesia, Mr. Dara from Cambodia, Sandeep, and also my dear friend Johnny, who has been putting a lot of effort to do this uh, session. Thank you all very much. And I'm sure that we'll move together and have a benefit for all the people who need us. Once again, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, can I request, because uh, these sessions are basically to do a groundwork for the concerned um, sectors. Now, if uh, we, as AIBC and uh, INCHAM, can give a platform, or maybe I can do from my end, that the segments that Cambodia is strong on, like silver, silk, paper, cassava, rice, rock issues, bicycles, garments, etc. We can probably, I will work I, with uh, Oknia Sokdara. I, I, I think, I, I think, yeah. I think Sandeep, this is a personal discussion. Mm -hmm. So, so we can have a personal discussion on this. Because as I told you, AIBC is a government platform. 
mm-hmm. we cannot discuss issues which are not related to this particular area we will uh-huh. definitely get back to you we'll have a discussion to see how we can work on i know there are various areas we can look at no i, I thought of collaborating i think tiwari ji wants to talk do. something tiwari ji you want to say something yes yes please you have to, you have to unmute tiwari ji yeah 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 i have to. thank you thank you very much for organizing the, this webinar what i already did in my presentation we look forward to have university collaborations because they are the people because we have to think like i what we did in india what we are doing in india what we are planning in india now our higher education has to start thinking about our rural part and smes have to start looking in those areas because now cities have collapsed countries have collapsed and this is a future so this is where we should join hands universities of various countries can join hands we can facilitate and then we create entrepreneurship cells in the universities and they should be our partners for future so uh, this is what this is my submission that this is what we should be doing because before we plant a tree we have to ensure that there is a gardener or mali there you know who takes care of the tree most of the smes small sector small smes don't plan around this and that is one big problem they face in their countries in their areas so thank you very much for organizing this and then we'll take it forward as ramesh ji said that we can discuss and uh, thank you sandeep ji thank thank you mr tiwari i think we got your message we will try to look into it to see how we can work together and take this agenda forward but as uh, we also have got a collaboration with fiki in india who are actually uh, the secretary for the asean india business council so we have to look into it to see whether okay. we are also working on the norms with certain groups to see whether it is in the right direction i do understand many people have approached us i from the asean side i take this as an asean event with india and we have to link with india we are trying to link with most of the chambers in india to see how best we can support and help the various industries the various organizations for asean and i'm willing to work with anyone we are willing to work with anyone as long as we have got a drawn up situation to see that it does not actually uh, cross lap with anyone so this these are my views and we'll come back to you mr tiwari thank you are there any other questions there is one from uh, i think if there are none no there is one from mr tiwari just now can you see in the chat box is one from ms neetu gag uh opportunities and available in asian yes thank you i think uh, on the asian side there are a lot of opportunities available and uh, we can create another forum for viewers only to see at the asean opportunity so we will get our speakers from all asean countries who could give their views and express the opportunities which are available from asean definitely we can have that as one of our programs in future we will support that thank you because i think uh, everyone knows that today asean plays an important role and yesterday i had a talk and i expressed myself in a more basically speaking asean is a bird we are the body and we have got two wings on one side we have india and on the other side we have china and the bird cannot fly to its height unless and until both the wings are working 
And they, if, if, if ASEAN want to fly to greater heights, it needs the support of India and China to play a role to take it up to a different level. So we are very open to a situation to work with everyone from India, We're very supportive to work with everyone within the ASEAN system, the 10 ASEAN countries. So I think basically speaking, investments have already flowed in from China to ASEAN, which there's no doubt about it. There's nothing to doubt on that. And we hope that more investment from India can flow to ASEAN so that the bird can be stronger and have stronger wings to fly. So I'm very sure that all of you here will support this idea. And I'm also telling my ASEAN counterpart that India is a great market. It's a huge market. And there's a huge opportunity. You have a young population. Your numbers are increasing. And we can always work together to find out ways and means that we can collaborate and move forward. Because what we need is numbers. And India has the numbers. What we need is a young population. India has the young population. What we need is digitization. India is good in the digitization norms and IT norms, where we have people there who can help us. So I think ASEAN will also work very closely with India, depend on India to work together to take it forward. This is my views, and we have always been very supportive for that. Thank you. If there are no other questions, Sandeep, I think we can end here now. And uh, it's already 12.30 Malaysian time. We have already been here for more than an hour and a half. Uh, I've got another meeting soon. Thank you once again, for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Sandeep, for, for organizing this nice uh, Pleasure. chat. Pleasure having you all as speakers. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Thank you Sandeep. Uh, Thank you. Nice of you. Thank nice of you. We'll keep in touch Thank with you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sandeep. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep, for organizing such a nice professional meet. Hope to participate in a similar presentation very soon. This is John from Canada. It's a wonderful program. We can uh, continue this. I'm Rengadhar Horia from Malaysia. Thank you very much. Bye bye. มาแล้วพี่จอมเลยน้องแชร์ติดมาเคยตั้งเป้าจองแต่ง